Today is the feast of Our Lady as Mother of the Church under this title as Mother of the Church. And this title of Our Lady was one that has been around for a very long time. Uh, there is evidence, it was mentioned even by St. Ambrose in the early, uh, I think, four, 400s. But um, in recent times, it's taken on greater prominence. So. Um, during the Second Vatican Council, this title was attributed to Our Lady, and I think it was in 1980 that John Paul II inserted this title into the Litany of Loreto also, and it was just recently that it was instituted as a feast, as an, uh, uh, an obligatory memorial but Pope from, by Pope Francis, and that was on February the 11th in 2018. So it's a very important feast because we should look to Mary as our spiritual mother and the title Mo Mary, Mother of the Church, reiterates this fact. Now when we say that she's the mother of the church, it's not as if the church was born from her. So she's an adoptive mother. And this is brought out in today's gospel reading where Christ from the cross refers to Mary and says, here's your son, referring to John. And then to John, our Lord says, here is your mother. And then it mentions from this hour, the disciple took her into his own home. So John in this instance represents all of us. In other words, we are called to do the same. Mary becomes our mother and we are called to take Mary into our home, into our hearts, so that we can see her as our own spiritual mother. And all of us need this spiritual mother. We need a perfect mother and we need God as our perfect father. And this perfection of Our Lady we know is there because she was conceived immaculate. Now we know this as Catholics, but our faith is also supported by scripture. Consider today's first reading from the book of Genesis. And our, our God is addressing the serpent. And um, so in addressing the, the serpent, it goes on to say that uh, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He, which is her offspring, will strike your head and you, the serpent, will strike his heel. And so this refers to Mary. So the woman that is being referred to is Mary. So this enmity between the serpent and the woman, is it just women in general? No, it's, it's a, a particular woman. But who is that woman? And if there is this enmity that exists, well, we can all say that, you know, we're all kind of opposed to Satan. That's true. So we're all, in one sense, at enmity against him. So enmity means to, means to be opposed to each other, very strongly opposed to each other. But the problem is that when we sin, we are not at enmity with Satan. Rather, we are on the side of Satan. And if all of us are sinners, none of us can be truly at enmity with Satan. So there's the only, the only one who can be truly at enmity with Satan is one who is free from all stain for their entire life, all stain of sin. And that can only be the Blessed Virgin Mary. So this, this reference in, in the very first book of the Bible is actually a foreshadowing or a prophecy pertaining to Our Lady who will be at enmity, who continues to be at enmity with Satan. And interestingly enough, um, exorcists point out that the evil spirits cannot stand Our Lady because she's so humble, she's just a lowly handmaid of God, and they cannot stand being defeated by her. So by her yes to God, by her standing at the foot of the cross, by her cooperation in the sufferings of our Lord, she becomes a kind of co-redeemer with Christ, not that she is able to do any of these things on her own, but because of this, so many graces flow through her. And in the same way that Christ came into the world through her, the graces from, that come from Christ continue to flow through her upon the entire church. In other words, it is the role of a mother to nourish her children. And Mary does this. 
So, of course, Christ does this also, but Mary does this in, in union with Christ. So she continues to, to nourish us and to protect us from all those things that harm us, especially the influence of evil spirits. So the whole point is the closer we are to Mary, the greater protection we have. So actresses point out that, you know, for example, when they sing the, the Our Lady's Magnificat or, or the, the Salve Regina, the evil spirits, they, they just shriek with terror. They cannot stand it. They cannot be, um, they can't stand to be reminded of Our Lady. So with Our Lady comes the graces of Christ. With Our Lady comes Christ himself. And so let us look to Mary as our spiritual mother, but also as the mother of the church, let us ask her to, to pray for the church, which in today's modern age is being so corrupted by the influence of, of worldly things, worldly society, and also the many divisions within the church. It's not something that Our Lady is pleased with. So let us ask her to, to pray for, for the church. Just a brief reminder, this evening at 7 p.m., um, Louis Dizon, our lay pastoral associate, will be giving his next, next talk. And the topic is, what about other religions? So should be very interesting. So that will take place in our parish hall this evening at 7 p.m.